Good afternoon, Western Washington, and happy Friday. I'm Matthew Fab with Western Washington Weather, and we have a lot to talk about today as this atmospheric river at actively impacts our region. You can see it right here on the satellite imagery, this plume of moisture right here, all these clouds streaming through Western Washington. Get a little bit of a rain shadow here off the Olympic Peninsula, and you got the edge of the atmospheric river here currently near parts of Vancouver Island there. It's pretty cool to see all these clouds here moving into the area. Taking a look at the active radar right now, we have all this rain moving through the area, but this atmospheric river starting to sag south a little bit, but look at the north coast, just been slammed with rain all day, as has southern Vancouver Island there, which is good news for that uh, Mount Underwood fire there, and also look at all the rain falling over the Bear Gulch fire in, in uh, Mason County there, so overall pretty good thing to see here so far. Taking a look at our rain totals, over the past 24 hours, you can see about a half inch for most of the lowlands. A little bit higher amounts there from Seattle northward up toward Bellingham, near an inch for some places. Look at the northern coast, 2.5 inches there in Quileute. And then along the southern and central coast there, over a half inch, some areas near an inch as well. And then taking a look at our maximum wind gusts as of 1 p.m. here, 40 miles per hour there at Whidbey Island, 41 at uh, Destruction Island there, 30s in Olympia and down along parts of the coast as well, and then 31 also at Payne Field. We'll likely see some of these winds increase throughout the day today, maybe gusting up to 30 to 35 miles per hour for most of the lowlands. Now taking a look at our overall pattern, you can see this trough offshore that's causing the atmospheric river to flow in right here. That weakens and just kind of hangs out over the next few days, maybe bringing a few showers to some parts of the area through Tuesday and Wednesday there. And then after that, we start to warm up again with some of this ridging building back into the area through the end of this week. Now taking a look at the European model uh, precipitation forecast here, you can see this afternoon that heaviest rain along Vancouver Island, and then that starts to push south into western Washington as we go into tonight. You can see that heavy rain in the Cascades and the Olympics, the North Shore Mountains of Vancouver there, and then some of that rain continuing across the lowlands all the way into early uh, Saturday morning there before moving out of the area. You can see we do have some areas of showers continuing all the way through Sunday, especially north of uh, Seattle there, kind of like an Olympic Mountain convergence zone, but angled pretty far north. And then we have some showers there on Sunday, but then we dry out for a little bit. Sporadic showers in the mountains on Monday, and then some rain potentially across the area Tuesday into Wednesday there before we dry out with the ridge building. So now taking a look at what's impacting us right now, this atmospheric river, you can see it offshore right there and then pushing through western Washington as we go through this afternoon and evening and then starting to push out of the area as we go into early Saturday morning. So we've been watching this for quite a while, obviously. All the last few videos have been about that and it's been pretty cool to see it actually verify and see it happening right now. Taking a look at the UW model here, this is a zoomed in view. You have Washington here and then Oregon and California and this is the atmospheric river. So as we go through this afternoon, you can see that uh, map, that really high um, integrated vapor transport there. That is how much water vapor is in the atmosphere moving toward an area. You can see how it just slams right into western Washington, that most uh, potent part of the atmospheric river. As we go through this afternoon and evening, how it's aligned right into Puget Sound there, including during the Seahawks game. So it's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty wet Seahawks game there, the preseason game there in Lumen Field. And uh, you can see how that continues all the way into tonight before the atmospheric river starts to weaken and gradually move out of the area as we go into early Saturday morning. Now taking a look at expected precipitation through the end of this atmospheric river here. This is the National Blend of Models, high resolution forecast run by the National Weather Service. And you can see for most of the Puget Sound area, you're looking at an additional half inch to three quarters of an inch, maybe up toward an inch for some locations, including parts of the Kitsap Peninsula, Mason County there and around the Bear Gulch fire up to two inches, the coast getting one to two more inches, and the Olympics and Cascades getting between two to four more inches with this system. And then you can see very similar thing on the European model, um, about a half inch to an inch more additional rainfall through Saturday with the atmospheric river for the lowlands and the I-5 corridor, and then the Olympics and Cascades getting two to four inches, and the coast getting one to two more inches. We can also look at a higher resolution forecast. This is the NAM model showing this ran a little bit later, so it's got a little bit more of that rain uh, accounted for already. So you're looking at about another half inch from Seattle down toward Olympia, and then a third of an inch to a half inch for most of the rain shadow areas here, including Whidbey Island, and some points south of Seattle getting about a quarter inch more rain. And then from Mount Vernon northward, you're getting a half inch to an inch of additional rainfall, about an inch more to an inch and a half on the coast, and then the Olympics and Cascades getting an additional two to four inches. And then this is the UW 
high resolution model. This is the highest resolution forecast we have. And it generally shows those same things about a half inch to an inch for most of the lowlands, except this Olympic rain shadow here. And then we have this like convergence zone signature type thing that's showing up here, bringing Whidbey Island a lot more rain than usual in setups like this. And then take a look at the coast and the Cascades additional two inches possibly in Quileute there, and then an additional two to five inches there in some of the mountains, especially those higher peaks there. So overall, really, really good amount of rainfall for August, a decent amount of or more than the entire monthly averages here within just a couple of days. So very good to see that. And now taking a look at winds, we talked about it a little bit at the beginning of the video here. The NAM model showing some decent winds across the region here with gusts on the coast, potentially in the 40 to 45 mile per hour range, especially there around the mouth of the Columbia River, Willapa Bay there, and then parts of the north coast as well. And then the northwest interior, parts of Hood Canal gusting 40 miles per hour or more there. You see 42 in Bellingham, 44 at Whidbey Island, 39 in the San Juans. So overall, pretty pretty nice round of wind as well. Could have some small areas with a little bit of tree damage considering all the trees do still have their leaves on them. Obviously, considering it is August right now, but nothing too significant in terms of wind because, again, it's August and this is really isn't going to do all that much damage. And then you can see across the lowlands gusts of 30 to 35 miles per hour as well. And then just wanted to point this out too, it's going to be pretty muggy. This is the European model showing those dew points in the mid-60s. That's pretty warm for western Washington. Those temperatures are also in the mid-60s, so it just feels pretty humid out there, but it doesn't feel super uncomfortable. This will continue all the way into tonight. Those temperatures won't really decrease that much. And then you can see the atmospheric river push eastward there across eastern Washington and bring some more moisture over there. We'll remain with these higher dew points over the next couple days with all this moisture around, but we will start to get back to normal conditions as we go throughout this week. So yeah, thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe here to Western Washington Weather. The channel's been growing quite a bit, and I would love to see that continue. And you can also follow me on Blue Sky on Facebook here, the Western Washington Weather Facebook group, and on Twitter. The links to all of these are in the description below. So thank you all very much for watching, and I'll talk to you all tomorrow.